Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, our main goal is to set up our encased industrial beams production line. Uh, we're going to do that from scratch. We're going to build it from the ground up. We will use the blueprint designer, but I'm going to um, actually design it on camera, too. Uh, I've already done it and tested it, and it works great, but... I thought some of you might want to see the whole process from start to finish in terms of, you know, using the blueprint designer and, you know, some of the um, uh, some of the things that are involved with that. Uh, so that's our main goal for today. But I got some other things that I want to show you uh, that I've done off camera. So first of all, I, I raised those lines up on this end instead of, you know, uh, when I originally set it up, I had the lifts over here and it gets them up higher in the air and just looks a lot cleaner through here. So we did that. And, um, and then I ran a bunch of product, uh, got a bunch of product run into uh, the factory. Um, we did like copper and caterium and limestone. I think those are the three we did. And in fact, I, I'm going to go actually go into fly mode um, because I'm just showcasing some things. We're not actually going to do any building or anything like that in fly mode. Um, just so I can show this to you more quickly and and more efficiently okay so I went around and I railed up the current base just because OSHA came by and they said if I don't do it right away I'm gonna get fined um, <laughs> uh, so we did that um, you know just to just to do it and then of course as we expand we'll adjust it out uh, I painted all the lines on the roads and I put the road barriers down on this side of the road uh, for the time being okay so we did all of that and uh, I did that all the way down uh, to the end of the road there. And I also did it all over here. Uh, you can see our extra lines that we've run in. So we've got a Caterium line. And I did decide to build just a little facility up by that Caterium. Now we'll go take a look at it to make the ingots. Um, and, and rather than truck the ore down here, because I just I thought that might be a little uh, you know cleaner way to do it. Because we are going to need these ingots for a few different things, some recipes. Um, alternate recipes and then their own stuff too. Uh, I ran this copper ore line and this limestone line. Everything is all on Mark 3. They're using Mark 2 miners and overclocked to produce 270 product to match the Mark 3 belt. Okay, so um, I changed this over here to, and I put walls down to run the conveyors along just because I, I felt like they needed some support. They don't, in, you know, as far as the game's concerned, but just for more realism, right? And I think it looks nicer, too. And then I put uh, ladders down for just quick access for me to get up here, you know, when I'm not flying around, of course. Over here, we have um, the copper. So this is the Mark II miner sending the copper down the line. Of course, everything right now is just stalled because we're not doing anything with it yet. And that's the limestone. And then the limestone uh, miners over this way. And all of these, again, like I said, are pure nodes. And, uh, yeah, so I had to do a little bit of a jury rigging kind of thing to get underneath this stone formation. Um, we had to do that a, a while back, too, when we were doing it with the coal. But, you know, it is what it is. got to work with the environment. And I'd rather go down than up because then that allows us... Well, we probably wouldn't necessarily do that on this line. But it just allows you to add more lines on top later on down the road if, you know, if you need to do so. All right, so that's everything over here. Let's go over this way. Uh, as you can see, I built a, a conveyor road, bringing the Caterium all the way down here um, to the Caterium uh, facility that we'll take a look at now. And, you know, I did my usual, put the uh, supports uh, where the power line distances are, except for in this particular case, I couldn't because we have the big powers down there. Have a ladder getting up here from the ground if we need to for some reason. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, I also ran another big power line, as you can see. Power tower. Excuse me. Over to there because if we decide at some point in the future to, you know, build some facilities, you know, back over off to the east there, which is the, which is the grasslands biome and then some other biomes... You know, um, we'll just keep running this power line as we go and we'll have to kind of turn it around or curve it around or whatever. Okay, let's go take a quick look at the Caterium setup over here. Everything looks so much nicer, you know, with the road painted and all the barriers and rails and stuff in. It looks good. 
I also um, railed up our coal road too. So that's that's that road way over there that goes up into the red forest or the red jungle. Uh, I completely railed that up too. So now it's it's a much safer situation. Okay, so over here, um, what I did was I decided, like I said, I decided to make the ingots over here rather than over at the factory. Um, and so this is a Mark II miner on a pure Caterium node. It's doing uh, overclock to do 270 per minute. Each one of these smelters can take in 45 ore per minute. So if we uh, do uh, 270 divided by 45, that gives us six. And so therefore we have six smelters. Nothing's overclocked on the smelters. They're just normal. But I figured, you know, I have the space for it. Let's not futz around with overclocking or underclocking. Let's just put in everything we need. It all works out with the right math. And we have splitters and mergers just kind of, you know, feeding it all in until it all comes back onto this Mark II line. We're producing a total of, uh, let's see, 15 times 6 is 90. So we're producing a total of 90 ingots per minute. And therefore, um, I put that on a Mark II belt because Mark II can handle up to 120. Okay. And then we have like just a little ladder access up here. And I put in some supports here just because I felt like uh, it should have those. I mean, arguably, arguably, maybe it should probably have one in the center, but I think we'll, we'll be good with that. There is a hard drive over here. I did get the hard drive out of it, but I haven't checked it. So we'll take a look at that in the mem. Um, and it looks like the bad bads are back too. Okay. I think that gets you updated on everything I've done since the last episode, all the off-camera stuff. Um, you know, the nature of this game is such that there's gonna there's just gonna be a lot of off-camera stuff. There's just no way around it. Um, I, I'm just, you know, most people don't want to see every second of every minute of time, you know, spent in this game. There's a couple hardcore people that would like to see that. And I don't mean that to, to be insulting at all. I, I get it. You know, some people just want to experience the whole thing, but most people don't. And, you know, I, I've got to, I've got to, you know, balance that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, I think that's, that's, oh yeah, let's check our ma'am and we should also have the rest of our power shards finished here too. So we have a total of 62 power shards. That's very nice. Let's not carry all of those around with us, just in case, I don't know, we get killed somewhere, fall into the abyss or whatever. Um, I would like to have a couple of, uh, a couple of them. So let's split, let's carry, let's carry eight with us. How's that sound? I have 18 coupons, by the way, in there, and I think we were up to 20 the last I checked, or very close to that. 19, yeah, so getting close. Getting close on those. Ma'am. We want to look at the ma'am. All right, so we've got the alternate iron alloy ingot. That's probably a really good one. Um, you know, one of the things that you guys mentioned in the... One of you guys, anyways, mentioned in the comments about these recipes, because I was kind of harping on some of them, thinking they, they were bad. Um, but the other thing to c take into account, I guess, when you're looking at these is, you know, what are the inputs and how easy is it to use those inputs, even if, you know, the output is not as, as high as some of the other ones. So that makes, that does make sense. Um, so, you know, maybe some of the ones that I said were terrible, maybe aren't as terrible in certain situations. Anyway, I, I like this actually, um, because we have... We have tons of iron coming in. We have tons of copper coming in. And the one we currently have, though, it uses coal and iron and produces 60 per minute. Oh, wait a minute. Is that right? Hold on a second. Let me look this up. Oh, no. You know what? I don't have the iron ingot. I was wanting it, too. I've got the steel recipe that takes the iron ingots and makes 60 steel per minute. So there's the pure iron ingot, which I maybe I do have that actually. And it does 65 per minute, but it also requires a refinery in water. So that, that'd be a later game one. But so this iron alloy ingot's pretty good just because 
um, you know, it does it does use two iron and two copper as opposed to just one iron, but it produces 50 per minute. And, you know, as long as we don't have a problem with those resources using a few extra, which we don't, I think that's a pretty damn good recipe to take. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the alternate iron alloy ingot. Now, let me look at something here. If we go to recipes, equipment, uh, no, parts, sorry, and iron, not iton, iron, iron ingot. I do have that recipe. Okay, cool. So I've got... I've got both of the alternate recipes now for iron. This one we can utilize later on, you know, when we get into refineries and stuff. Uh, but this one won't be a bad one for us to have now. And, you know, the other thing about that, too, is that we might we might look at utilizing this in, in this in, ca in case industrial beams. I, I based it off of using the, the coal recipe. But we might rethink that and see if we can get it to work with this one instead. We'll see. Okay. Um, good. I'm happy we got that. that. That's a good alternate recipe to have. I think we're ready to get started with our build here. Um, so, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load up our... Uh, steel. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna load this one up and modify it. So this is the one that we built for the beams and the pipes, and it has um. It has four refiners just using the normal iron recipe, and then it has three foundries that are using the the nicer steel recipe, the one that does sixty per minute. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head enhanced steel recipe or whatever um i guess we could just look it up real quick it won't take but a second we have the the uh yeah this one here the alternate one recipe there's it's funny that they don't show the name though because there's because there's actually a, it's called some kind of steel but does it tell us here what it's called huh -uh. interesting okay uh, let's see. Now, we're going to need to get up and down from here. So, trying to figure out what the easiest way to do that is. Can we just, like, build a temporary... Um, yeah, let's get that into zoop mode. There we go. Yeah, we can't. The thing is, is, we can't attach anything to the blueprint. So let's put that platform there, and that should be good enough for us to jump up here. All right, now let's consider first of all. Um, let's let's throw down a an assembler. This is actually part of the build later, and go to encase industrial beans. And I I don't have any alternate recipe for this. We're just going to use the basic recipe. So it's going to need 24 steel beams per minute and 30 concrete per minute. This one's easy because one constructor outputs, with no overclocking outputs, 15 concrete per minute. So two constructors, and we got that one taken care of. This one's a little trickier because of the fact that um, the numbers don't work out natively, right? So this outputs 30 per minute. Um, uh, no, sorry. Hmm. Okay, hold on a sec. The it, it we're talking about the beams. So the beam setup over here is 30 yeah, 30 per minute. Okay, so we got two constructors uh producing 30 per minute, but we only need 24 per minute. However, I've got uh I've got that covered. Um my design is going to take the overflow uh, we're gonna create. We're gonna make 30 beams per minute on on this one too, and but it's, it's gonna take the overflow and send it off to storage. Um, so we only need for this build three of the uh, refiners. This guy uh, or this spot, I should say, is, is gonna ha uh, be one of the two constructors that we're going to use. So these guys can pretty much just stay as they are. 
and um, we're going to have the, I'm going to down clock or I'm going to underclock these a little bit though because we're also only going to use uh, two refiners, or sorry, foundries with this build and so we only need to provide a total of 80 um iron to these guys because because we're going to use yeah we're using that steel recipe what is that called again alternate solid steel ingot that's the name of it it's really weird that it doesn't show that um in this in this menu it just calls it alternate recipe one but it doesn't call it the solid steel ingot recipe Huh. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's just kind of weird. Okay, anyway, um, so we want to feed. Uh, we need a total of 80 iron coming into these guys, but we're producing 90 because we have three doing 30 per minute. I don't want to go with two and overclock them. I could, but, you know, I, I want to be judicious about overclocking, you know, Um I, it, for a couple of reasons. One, you know, we do have limited power shards, even though we have quite a few right now. But, I mean, in the long run, you know, you know we could run out of them, theoretically. Probably won't, but we could. But I also want to try and, you know, make the math work natively without resorting to overclocking all of the time. We certainly will use it and have used it, but, you know, I don't want to do, do that all the time. That's not always going to be the solution. Okay, so that being said, what we basically need to do is we need to divide 80 by 3 and that's 26.66667 okay so what we're going to do then is we're going to set this to 26 point uh I, let's just do 26.666 per minute well it's going to round it up to 2667 that's fine Okay, we'll copy these settings here, and then we'll paste the settings on the other two refiners. Very good. Okay, that's got that taken care of. Now, we've got to do a little bit of, you guys should already be set for, yeah, you're already set for the, the steel recipe, so we're good there. Uh, now, we need to do a little bit of work on down below to kind of modify this a bit. So, let's remove these floor tiles, and... I think I'm going to, whoops, let's uh, remove a couple of those as well. So this has got to go, that's got to go, that's got to go, and that's got to go. Oh, hold on, just these two here. Um, what are you doing down here? You're, oh yeah, you were for the, the the coal for the third foundry, which we also don't need. So we can get rid of that as well. Okay, now we just need to run a belt around to, uh, from this merger to this splitter, and then we're golden. That's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We do want this to be a mark two. Yeah, because we have a total of 80. And a Mark 1 only does 60. Right, okay. Uh, so we're going to make this a Mark 2, and we're just going to bring it down here. Uh, which one of those lines is the one we're after? It's the one... I, I really like these markings on the Blueprint Designer floor. It helps a lot. Okay, let's go back to raise that up to there. And then we've got a nice, clean 90 degree inside of there. Okay, and that's really all we have to do uh, for the iron feed into the foundries well and the coal that's all we got to do for all of it it's all ready to go it's all good to go okay now let's go ahead and work on setting up the concrete next um this should all be good over here too yep so i'm going to put the floor back to there but we'll uh yeah, we're going to need to put at least one floor there as well. Okay, I'm going to take this lift out. Let's grab a our first constructor that's going to be used for uh, concrete. 
Let's push it back till it's red. Pull it back this way once. We're going to keep it pretty tight. Oh, you know what? Let's get rid of this for now, too. Oh, that's too tight, actually. Okay, we got to pull it back twice. Okay, so it's red. Pull it back once. Pull it back twice. That's good. Okay. That will work fine. Now, let's, uh, let's just get a mark... One lift. We want to attach it to the hole, not to the machine. And then we want to make sure that uh, this is an input. So, yeah, that should be correct. That's an input. And then the back end of this will, will connect to our concrete line. Okay, now let's, um, let's grab a grommet. And we'll put that there. Grab the lift, and again, reverse this, because this is an output. And that should take care of that. And then I believe all we're going to do here is just put one and keep it up on the ceiling and make sure it's an output, and we're good to go there for the moment. Okay, cool. Um, now, let's go ahead and put that piece of floor in there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put another, um, my phone's acting weird. Uh, we're going to put another constructor for the other 15 concrete that we need to do. And I think for this one, we will, let's put it right there for the moment. Trying to remember if I held that all the... I think I did hold that all the way forward. Oops. And it still should be lined up. Good. Okay, so... Um, trying to remember how I did this. I might have to go load up my other save and to take a quick look at it, but we'll see. Uh, I'll try and do as much of it as I can by memory, but if I screw it up, then you know. Okay, so this is um, an input, and it looks... Yeah, right? Right. That should be correct. Okay, let's hop down here. And... What I'm going to do for this guy is... Trying to remember how I did that. Um, I know one thing I do know for sure is that this is going to need to be a... Uh, one of these walls here. Because we have to bring the other concrete line in through here. If I remember right, I think I was able to get away with putting this here. Um, that's an input, so that needs to be reversed. Okay, hold on. Why is that? Yeah, sometimes when you attach to the grommet instead of the machine, it can be it can get a little weird. That would actually let me take that all the way through, wouldn't it? Um, if we do it that way... That should be... Yeah, this is an input. Okay, I think that's correct. Let's go look at it. I don't usually do it that way. No, it needs to go the other way. Shit. All right, here, let's just do this and do it that way. Okay, I think I was able to just bring the line in and go straight into there. I'm pretty sure that's what I did. But, again, if uh, if things don't quite work out, we'll, uh, we'll adjust for that. 
right now there's s no okay we're good um all right now i think um i just thought of something All right. I've got to load my other one in, guys. I I, I can't <laughs> I can't remember what I did. Okay, so let's do this. Let's save this, um, and we're gonna call this um, encased beams part A, and we'll save that. That way we can reload it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to clear the designer, grab the stuff, and I'm going to load my test version, uh, which is this one. Oh, okay. So that's what I did. I put the lift on that side. It's what, you know, this is one of those things where there's a few different ways you could do it. This is, I guess this is what I decided to do. Um, okay, so we put the lift there and then ran the belt there. We pulled that one all the way to the floor and faced it against the wall and put a splitter on it. And then that one came down and faced that direction with a wraparound belt. Okay, I think I got that. Clear the designer. I have to say, man, I really love this blueprint designer. The only, my only complaint really is I wish it was larger because it's it's pretty compact. Um, and you know, I, yeah, you can make things in pieces and you have to, but why why do that? Why not just make the damn thing bigger? You know, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, so we are. Oh, this is I put the wrong icon on that, but that's okay. We can fix that later. In fact, let's do that right now. Oh, we want that icon. Okay. Save the blueprint. Confirm. Okay. So we want to put a lift here. And that is correct. That's an input or an output. I'm sorry. Uh, we want this to come down to here as an input. We want to put a splitter here. Um, yeah. Here. That. Hold on a sec. It's got to be this way. And let's just do this. Let's lock it and nudge it over. It'll be easier. And then we just run a belt to there. Let's reattach this now to make sure it's actually attached. Hmm. Oh. This needs to be a merger. That's No. No, it's a splitter. What the hell's going on here? Okay, hold on. Let's try this again. I got it to work before. I swear I did. <laughs> okay, it should go right there. Reattach that to make sure it's actually attached. Input. This is an input. That's why. There. We heard the beep. Okay. We heard the beep. And then um, this is an output. And it came down to here. And then we just put a belt in and wrapped it around here and brought it. We can just bring it to here because it'll, it'll connect to the next section. All right. I think we got that covered. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Now, let's go back up here. We've got one, uh, two more things we need to do before we're done with this one. We want to set this to concrete. See, 15 per minute there. Set this to concrete. Uh, right here. 15 per minute, both of them to combine. We'll produce 30 per minute, which is what we need for our assembler to make the encased beams. Last thing we need to do here is just uh, make sure the power's good. Uh, we can 
Uh, I think I'm just going to actually remove that and reach right over to there. It's nice and clean. I want to use as few of these power poles as possible. Can we get over to here without clipping anything? Um, yeah, looks like we're good. Okay, so that takes care of power. That'll be our main power connection, connection pole or that one, whichever one we decide to use when it's all said and done. And I think... Oh, we got to reattach this. So this is an input. And it looks like that's what it's set to. Oh, actually, hold on. For this one, we should be able to just attach to this and go like that. We'll, we'll test it, of course, and make sure, because sometimes I screw these up. <laughs> uh, all right, let's double check everything. Uh, so each one of you should be set to 2667, 2667, 2667. We already know from our math from earlier that that's, well, we need 266667, but, you know, that's as close as we're going to get in order to get three of these guys to provide a total of 80 to our two foundries, uh, which needs... Each one of them needs 40. As far as the coal goes, that's easy. Um, I've got 270 coming in on that line, and we're only using 120 of it for this, so we still have another 150, or yeah, we still have another 150 available to us on that line. So that'll be easy peasy, limit squeezy when the time comes. And I think we're done here with this first section. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. In case beams part A, we'll save that. Oh, I need to uh, change this description too. What was my uh, what was my description of my test ones? Oh no no no! Here, go back to here. Go to edit. Go to here. Use a solid steel alternate recipe, produces six per minute. Okay, so let's just copy and paste that because I'm too damn lazy to type all that shit out. Cancel that. And paste that in there. Solid steel produces six per minute in case beams. Um, save the blueprint. I seem to have challenges getting it, the directory to work from here. It seems to work better for me if I do it from this menu. I don't know why, but it just seems that way. In fact... Wait a second. Where is our... Oh, I thought I... Oh, no. I, I did make a steel folder for the steel stuff, but I think I did that on one of my test saves, and so, yeah, we need to do that too. So if we go to Edit, Add a Category, call this category... Um, whoops. Steel Products... We'll select the factory icon, click apply, apply changes. Okay, and then we can drag our uh, steel recipes into there. It's just a little bit weird how all, how this whole folder thing works. Um, drag that into there. Apply changes. Okay, so I want to keep the test ones in the undefined category so I don't mix them up. So this is the one we just now built. Um, it's interesting though if we save it from here it, what happens if we go so set directory set steel products this, this is the part that I always confuses me because I click on it but there's no apply button right it's just there's no apply <laughs> do I have to hit edit I mean I can add another category, but I don't want to do that. See, it, uh, it you can't... I don't know if that's a bug or if I'm just doing something wrong. Probably, it's probably me, but that just seems so unintuitive. It's just, like I said, it's easier for me to work with it from here. Nevertheless, um, all of these are now in under the steel products category. If we do make any kind of modification and save it again, I'll have to just move it back in there again. But I think we're done with part A. All right, so let's clear the designer, grab the stuff, and we are um, we're ready to put this in place. 
So I think what I want to do for this is... We might be able to get it to work from this corner here. Let's go to blueprints. In case beams A. Make sure it's turned this way. And then... Oh, hold on a sec. Alright, I don't want a double wall. I have... Uh, I haven't really decided how I'm going to handle the logistics floor. I might keep keep them open for the most part and just separate each section with rails like this. But I haven't really completely decided how I'm going to do that. But nevertheless, I, I don't want a double wall there. So, okay. Um, blueprints, beams part A. To do really small mouse movements here. Oop, right there. That should be exactly where it needs to go. That looks right. I don't know. It might not have even let me do that without removing that wall. Or if it would have, it would have glitched them together. Which wouldn't have been good, because then they would have flickered. So, yeah. Okay. Now, before we uh, work on the next part, let's get our hookups done back here. Um, so... Let's start by... We're just going to pull off of this line, because the line in total is 270. And we're pulling off uh, 120. Each one of these guys is 30, right? So so we still have 150 available on this line. And we only need uh, 90. Uh, yeah, 90, I think, for, th for this setup. Right. Okay, so let's grab a splitter and press Control to line that up on that belt. Same thing here. Control. And control. This can just all be mark one. Excellent. Okay, now for the concrete, the concrete's all the way at the top. Let's get let's get up above here. Um, can I do a, a spring jump up there? Let's find out. This is where maybe having the springboards might be useful. Woo! <laughs> Almost. Not quite. Okay, I got stairs over here. I did do a little more work on this factory too, by the way, since the last episode. I put these stairs in, put the rails in. Um, did, you know, did the border around the machines with concrete. And, uh, yeah, so look, it's looking good. Let's run through here, try not to lose a finger or a head. Um, let's get up on top of here. Oh, shit. Don't do that. Sometimes that parachute, man, I tell you what. Okay, so, um... We're, uh, I guess the first thing is we're going to have to put splitters on here. And it does look like it'll line it up for us. So that's step number one. Does it line this one up, too? Oh, you know, you know what? I think this one, if I remember right, I had to hold it out about uh, one splitter's width-ish. So that's going to be maybe, we'll say there. We can adjust it more later if we need to. Okay, now let's get back down on the ground here. This one should be lemon squeezy. We just have to... Uh, do a Mark 1 lift down to here. There's our beep. It connected. That's a beautiful thing. All right, now this one, um, what I did, if I recall right, is I connected this there and I turned it this way. Don't get that up. And then we just... Oh, uh, oh yeah, we got to raise that up. Is that 
right? Yeah. There we go. We should see concrete coming down that in a second. We do not. Uh, yeah, we do. It's just slow because it's a Mark 1. So that should take care of that. Let's go look and see. We have the concrete flowing through. So that's a good sign. The only other connection we have to make is our coal connection. And so what we'll do there is we will remove this. We'll grab ourselves a splitter. And line that up there. This, These need to be Mark II belts. Um, oh, that's not lined up correctly. Okay. Try that again. That's... That should be correct, right? Yes. Um, why don't we just reattach this... Uh, this is Mark... No, this needs to be Mark 3. Right? Yeah, it does. Okay, so make this a Mark 3 lift. Excellent. Okay. Mark 2 belt into here. And Mark 2 belt into here. Okay, go back to... Went back too far. How the hell did I manage to do that? Can't take me anywhere. Oh, uh, here. Let's just redo it. It must have... I must have had it lined up on that line instead of this line. Okay, back to one, two. Now we got a pretty 90 degree angle. It's beautiful. Okay, that takes care of our coal hookup. And all of our hookups, actually, as far as uh, our incoming resources. We should be golden. The coal must flow. All right, now we're going to build the the part B to this. Um, so let's just go ahead and load back in part A. Um, okay, we're going to get rid of all of this. And then I want to make sure the grommets are set correctly. So that grommet should be... Uh, I think it's good. Yeah, it needs to be right smack dab in the center. Because on the new setup, that's going to be the input from coming from here. So we just got to redo the grommets for the, uh, for the foundries. Make sure they're in the right location as well. And that's going to be this output here. Okay, so here, let's, um, we'll redo the power once everything else is set up. Okay, that should be correct. And then same thing here. This one goes there. Those guys are lined up. Beautiful. Okay. Now, all of this can go. Let's leave that constructor there for the moment because we're going to snag it again. Get rid of all of this. All right, now, let's grab this constructor here. And um, I think we want to pull it forward twice. Yeah, that's good. And the same thing here. One, two. 
And we're going to set these guys to steel beams at 15 per minute. We're going to take the full 15 per minute from both of them. We're not going to underclock these guys because we have a plan for making this work. Um, no. Yes. Right, because I'm going to hook these up down below. Okay, so... Um, grab a Mark 1. It should be an input. Wait, what did I just... Cut it out. Don't do that. That looks correct. Okay. And that looks correct. Whoops. No, 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 no. I'm not doing this right. These, uh, these have to be inputs for the, the two steel foundries in the second concrete machine. Um, okay, so I'm trying to remember how far forward I kept these, uh, these guys. Let's just bring it all the way to here. Let me look at that and see if that looks correct. What we're going to do is... Oh, we got to get rid of all this stuff down here, too. It almost might have been faster for me just to start a fresh one, but that's okay. Let's get rid of all of this. And all of this... All of this because we got to redo all of this stuff here. We need a clean floor to work with here. Um, this entire wall goes because we're attaching this to the first part. Okay, so I think the way that I did this is, let's just look at it. All right, so we're going to save this as in case beams part B. Um, okay, clear the designer, take all. Let's load the test version, part, a, a part B test, right. Oh, what am I missing? Smart splitter. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, AI limiter is what we're missing. And the reason for that is because this one actually has uh, a smart splitter on it. So, let's actually make a couple of those. Encased uh, B is one we want to load. Okay, let's take a look and see what I did here. Oh, wow. I have those really close, don't I? Hmm. I mean, it worked because I tested it. Okay, so those are really close to each other. And since we, since I have it here, it looks like what we did here is we created a merger to merge both of the concretes to go into the assembler. Right. Okay. Sorry, guys. I just don't have a good enough memory to remember every single thing I did. <laughs> So we gotta we gotta look at the template here. Um, take everything. Load blueprint. We want to load. Oh shit! Did I? It's this one, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. So according to what we just looked at, these guys are like this close to each other. Um, and so if we grab a lift, basically did this, except for that needs to be reversed. Okay. There we go. Okay. So that takes care of that. Um, now we had a lift coming down, whoops, uh, coming down here. And, and uh, yeah, we had a merger in between with the output going this way. That should be correct. I don't know how close I had that. I think for this, it doesn't have to be super close, but let's nudge it anyways. Okay, and then we had um, this coming out. I have this the wrong direction. The output's got to be on that side. And you know what? I'm actually not going to jam it up in there. I don't think we need to. Okay. And then that should be the output. And then we had a belt coming out this way to meet up with that belt right there. And then this will wrap around to the assembler once we get it in place. Moving right along. Get rid of that. Let's head back up the top side here. Um, we could actually um, move this back one, and I think we want to. It's tight, but it works. Don't be making that's what she said jokes. It's a PG-13 channel. Come on. Oh, God damn it. Let's do it from this side. There we go. All right, let's grab a lift. And that's going the right direction. That's going the right direction. Steel beams, steel beams. Very good. Okay. Um, let's look at this again for a minute. So, yeah, we just need the beams and the concrete coming in. And we put the concrete on the other side. So let's grab some grommets and put these down here and we'll grab some lifts uh, connect to there and switch to that that should be correct right this is the input of that that guy right there that guy. <laughs> I can't zoom in very fast. I need to adjust the maybe my mouse scroll rate or something. Okay, so now we need the assembler. So let's grab the assembler and I'm going to turn it this direction. And let's actually go over here. I think. I think I had it a little further over this way. I 
You know what? Let's let's look at it again. Save the blueprint. Confirm. Load the test B. Okay, so I did line it up on this seam. And it looks like we also had the front of this on this seam, well, you know, a couple inches back. Right, okay, I got it. I know some of you are thinking, why don't you just use the one you built? But that's not the point. <laughs> the point is I'm trying to build this from from the ground up on camera, at least this time. We've, we won't be doing this every single time, but uh, at least this time. So there you go. All right. Now we want to reload part uh, B back up. Okay, so it's this seam here and this seam here that we want it to come to. I believe that's where we want it. Huzzah. Okay, let's put a couple grommets in here. Correct. While we're still up here, let's get our power taken care of. Um, for this guy, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to put one there and one there. And then we just... Do that and it's not clipping nice and clean okay that takes care of power let's save this okay now we just need to hook up the logistics down below and then we're then we'll be there so I think what I did here is we brought you down here and did I go I think I reversed these pretty sure that's what I did put these in place here and then this one, let's see, we're producing 30. This is a mark. Yeah, so the line's fine here. Let me just make sure I got the right input. Uh, so it's this little seam here. Okay. Come on back two. Go up two. And I didn't get this set correctly. I need to reverse that. Hmm. It's not changing the arrows, which is odd. I think revert. Whoops. I think reverse is what we want, though, isn't it? No. We don't want reverse. We want normal. Okay, what the frick's going on here? I think it's wrong up above and that's why it's not letting me change it. So let's let's remove these first and we'll do the ones down below first cuz then we can change them. Okay, reverse. There we go. Nice clean 90 degree. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, that takes care of the concrete input. Uh, now what we're going to do is
Right, okay. Uh, we need a merger here with the output coming this direction. Um, I'm going to guess it's probably right about there, but let's use the awesome lock and nudge tool. That is the best thing ever that they came up with with this game. Okay, let's reattach this. Run a line. Whoops. Run a line here to there. And nope, we gotta we gotta move that out one. Okay, nudge it over to the left. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to bring you... Here, let's do it this way. Bring you out to here. I think, I think I want to be on this line. No, that's too far out. Okay. I'll just put another conveyor pole here. Look at that. Beautiful. Is it straight? Looks like it is. Okay, and then final thing we're going to do here is we're going to grab a smart splitter. Smart splitter with the... Yeah, like this. We're going to put it right about in the center of here. We're going to put a lift on here going out this direction. And we're going to tell this thing to send overflow out the left side. So that way, because remember, eventually, these constructors, you know, they're, they're going to make 30 beams per minute. But this guy only, um, only takes in 24 per minute. So eventually it'll get backed up. So when that happens, then it'll just shoot the extra out the overflow and give us even more beams over in our storage and or for the sink. And that way we don't have to worry about things getting jammed up. It's pretty nice. All right, you go here. You should be an input. You should be an input. And I think we're ready to hook these two up. Almost there. Save the blueprint. Confirm. In case beams part B. If I go to here, and I go to here, we want to drag this down into steel products. Oh, no, actually, first of all, we got to do edit and drag that into steel products. Apply changes, and now the ones we built are here. These, these are just my test ones. Let's take this sucker apart and put it together. Um, let's do it from this angle here. Part B. Uh, we want to turn it this, yeah, part, turn it that way. And bump it right up against there. It's a beautiful thing. Let's do um, another walkway here, except for this one we can attach directly to the building because it's not uh, part of the blueprint designer. Okay, so down here, uh, whoops, let's remove that and just attach this into there and that takes care of that part. That's easy enough. 
That's the output of that first constructor. And I think that's all we need to do down here. We'll hook this up later after we make sure everything else is working. Okay, so we need a lift here. Uh, I think that's going the right direction. We're just gonna pop them in as they are, and if they're wrong, we'll re we'll fix them later. Um. Okay, I think that's it, guys. I think we're ready to fire this thing up. I'm sure I'm missing something, but I don't know what it is. So. <laughs> So let's run power from here. Let's do this. Let's run a power line from there to there. And that one's already connected. And probably as long as it doesn't clip. It's, it is kind of, it's touching that, but it is an insulator. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll worry about that later. Let's start checking things and see. Oh, that's a good sign. Okay, so this guy's already working. These guys are working. That one started up. This one should, okay, that one started up. What about you? You... Are not working yet. Okay, so we got a problem with one of these lifts here. What in the. What the hell? Oh, that's the one I, I tried to pass all the way through. Right. Okay, that didn't work so well. This should work. Huzzah! Okay. That was an easy fix. Okay, looks like both of our beam machines are working. And as soon as we get enough concrete in here, we'll start our first encased industrial beam. There it goes. <laughs> Look at that, you guys. I made one mistake on the whole thing. Um, well, I mean, I did test it ahead of time, but my memory is so terrible that <laughs> that's not saying much. That's awesome, though. It's all working. How about that? Okay, so we have two things we need to do. We need to connect the assembler uh, into our storage. Um, and we need to hook up the overflow. Why don't we... The overflow is going to be a lot easier, so let's do that first. Um, and in the meantime, that might get jammed up a little bit, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to punch a hole in this wall. Um, yeah, that'll come right through there. And this is the line that's feeding the beams out, you know, to our storage. So we're simply just going to put a merger on here. And we'll just kind of eyeball center it there. And yep, those are good. Okay. And then we're just going to run a line to here. That is going to be on this seam here, okay? Um, I don't know if I need to hold that back or not. I th think I do. Yeah, I think we need to hold it back maybe the, u the usual two, right? Yeah, should be right. Turn that that way. Are those lined up? Looks like they're. Boom. Okay. So we will never have to worry about this thing getting clogged up. And the extra beams will just go into our storage and or to the sink. Uh, just along this line here. I love it. Okay. Final part of this task is to get 
um, all of the uh, get these beams over to our storage. So that's going to involve a couple of things. I think what we're going to do for that is. Yeah, let's remove that wall and we're going to put a. Put that in zoop mode. Um, is that? That's too high, right? Yeah, um, we, we don't need the top piece there. Okay, so we need to put a lift here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go, let's go up two clicks and see if that's right. Oh, wait a minute. Is that not? Oh, that's not lined up. Okay. We can fix that, though. Uh, we just need to plug that into there. Go up. I think we were at the right height. Turn it that way. Let's see what it does. Is that straight? It looks pretty damn straight to me. Yes, it is. Look at that. It's beautiful. Okay, so that gets the uh, beams over to to there. And I actually need to go somewhere in real life for a bit. Uh, so I'll be back to finish this episode here in a while. All right, guys, I'm back and uh, let's finish this. Let's finish this job up here. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, run those up the middle like that and you know what else too I think I want to do I think I might want to move these out a little bit maybe to there Put an extra one up there we don't need. All right, let's get these out of here. I forgot I was going to move these out, so otherwise I wouldn't have put that center one in. <clears throat> I just think they need more. I mean, realistically, <clears throat> they should have more support. In fact, almost could make an argument that we could support them there, but... I mean, we can only take the realism to things so far. You can overdo it, too, uh, because, you know, it is just a game, right? Okay, so the other thing I want to do is I want to... Um, we're going to do this, and you'll see why here in a bit. I'm going to put these up here. Like so. Okay, we're going to take this one down. And then I'm actually going to take, yeah, I'm going to take the first three back, back away. Now here's what, here's what's going to happen. <clears throat> um, when we put the new storage module in, it's basically going to appear like the supports are resting on top of, um, on, on top of the storage. And we could, can we uh, remove that one too? I think so. Yeah, it looks it, it should still touch. If not, um, you know, clip in just a little bit. But it'll appear like the supports are just on top of the of the storage okay good so we got that part done now um this this i think has to go yeah this has to go too and this is going to go for the moment all right now we need to change this around we we basically can't have that's got to go too 
We basically can't have this here because it's going to be right in the way of the next set of storage. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise it up like so. So let's take this and put it there. And we'll take this and put it there. And that fixes that. And it, what it does is it gets this basically this lift out of the way. And it gets this off the floor, which is always a good thing. Keep the floor as clean as possible. Very good. Okay. Um, all right, now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to put in the next level of storage, which is these guys over here, uh, which I think was the six high that we made several episodes ago. So let's go to blueprints. Go to oh, you know what? We're going to need we're going to need uh, some more AI limiters to do this. I think we just need a total of three. I'm going to make a few more. I, I just like to have a couple of these on hand anymore these days because we do use the smart splitters quite a bit now. All right, let's go to blueprints. Let's go to storage. We want the six high version of this and we want to pop it in right uh let's see here all right why is that not working it worked when i tested it earlier oh we're missing we're missing parts it's not a positioning thing it's a parts thing we need some of this for the signs on the front that makes sense okay let's try this again uh, six high storage. Okay. I think that's where we want to go. Yep, that looks good. Okay, cool. And we... Yep, everything's... Oh, wait a second. Oh, there's one other thing I forgot to do. I need to move this in. Yeah, get rid of that. I need to move that um, in a little bit. In fact, we should be able to just connect it right on the end of, of there. Just like this. There we go. Okay. Now everything now it's clear. Everything's out of the way. I don't think that screwed this belt up, but let's just reset it anyway, just in case. Should be fine, but we'll do it anyway. Okay, good. So that takes care of that. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're going to We're gonna take a lift um and put it here, like so. And that's what we're going to run the encased beams into. Beautiful. Okay, now let's take the beams here and run them over to uh, to there. Oh, you know what? I went too high on those, didn't I? There we go. Now, let's see if we can... Um, I'm probably actually going to have to put a temporary riser down to get that to go in there, I think. Let's just see what it does. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to need to do that. Um,
does, uh... Yeah. Whoa. Cut it out. Let me down. Let me down. Okay, so... Let's see here. How are we gonna do that without... Having... God damn it. Knock it off. Without taking that all apart. If we put a belt in there and then let's see, we're looking, we're lined up with this. Okay. So let's go there and then back to here. Okay. And then we're going to put that there. Oh yeah. Okay. It'll, it'll let us glitch up through there and that this is just temporary anyway, because that's not going to stay there. I mean, actually, I probably could stay there. I don't think it'll cause any trouble. Okay, now, let's grab this. Probably would have been easier for me to do this from a lookout tower, but that's all right. I think we got it covered here. All right, let's just make sure that that's straight. It's not. Frick, okay. So we need to, we just need to pull it back one more. Hmm, I thought I had that lined up, but apparently not. Okay. Go right up the middle there. Actually, that... Well, no. Let's redo the whole thing just to make sure it all comes in good. And you know what? Let's just... Let's quit making this hard. Should have just done this in the first place. <laughs> you know, you get in a hurry to do stuff and you... Sometimes you end up wasting more time than if you would have just done it right in the first place, right? There we go. Okay. Uh, except for that this belt is... or something... Oh, was that just a graphical thingy? Yeah, it was. Okay. So that looks good to me. Um... It's... Oh, you know what, though? It's not... Now that I look at it from this angle, we need to come up one more... Wait, do we though? Yeah. No, this one's level. The these other two are up too high. That's what the problem is. Yeah, cause see how these are kind of slanting down there. So we need to fix that. We need to make a right, and that'll be should be easy enough to fix. We'll redo this, but oh well, we're gonna have to get rid of this too, otherwise it'll try and snap. That's what we want right there. All right, let's... Hopefully that won't be an issue. All right, let's make sure there's no issues. Sometimes when you connect a bunch of different belt segments, they can screw it up, but it looks to me like... It's all good. The spice is flowing. Okay. It was just, it was very imperceptible, but it was there. There's always a reason. That's the thing. Even though sometimes it's not always easy to see. Uh, I think that's, yeah, that's where we want to go. Okay. Let's make sure the spice is flowing on that one as well. It's looking okay to me. All right, and we've got encased beams coming down the line. 
I think we're good, guys. Oh, we do have one more thing to do. Uh, actually, we got a couple more things we got to do. Um, we need to set. I could just actually leave this here. It would probably need that support anyway. Let's set that to encase industrial beams. Okay. And there they go. Beautiful. And then we need to change the sign. Uh, nope, the sign. Select image. And encased industrial beams. Oh, that isn't going to work. All right, what if we abbreviate this? Yeah, that'll probably work. Okay. I love it. And then we have one uh, one more task to do here. And let's move. Let's use this, but we're going to move it out just a little bit more. All right, so what we want to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and start a new awesome sink because, and we're going to move this one over to the new one. Because I think if we start adding, um, oh, why is that? Is that? Yeah, you know what? I might have to fix that because I sh what I should have done is set the splitter first before I s hooked up the product, but I didn't think about it. No, that that stuff will probably just go out overflow, which is which is fine. Okay, so anyway, um, what I want to do is I want to take you and put you down here. I want to take you. Put you right there. Uh, is that right? I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. And then reattach this again. Okay, so it'll just move that the stuff that was there through as overflow. But anything new coming down the line should be routed into the storage. Okay, good. Now let's grab you. And we'll put you... You want to be on that seam there and lined up like that. And then hook that belt in. And then that, that should clear all the stuff that went out overflow. And anything new, like I said, will go into the storage now. Okay. Um, then we want to grab another one of you and make sure that the output is lined up with that and... We just kind of hold control. Well, it's kind of bouncing all over the place, isn't it? Okay. It's showing us the green line there. And... Is that correct? I think so. Okay. And then we'll put this here. No, it's not correct. Well, actually, here. Let's... Whoop. Let's just jump down onto the top of here. Or not. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> so it needs to be one, two. And now I've got the green line. I didn't have it before for some reason. Is that right? I think so. Yes, it is. Okay. And this is correct? Yes, it is. Very good. And then let's grab a power pole 
and we'll line up with you. Oh, it's right on the seam, so that's easy enough. There we go. Okay, so one more thing, and then we're done. <clears throat> we're going to reroute all of this business over to here now. Uh, because the way that I have this set up is... The first, uh, the first three plus the one extra uh, copper sheeting is going into this one, and then moving forward, we'll probably just set up a new sink for for um, each for three sets of three, or for nine items. That's another way of saying that. Because if we get too many things going into one sink, then it's going to start to slow down a little bit. Right, okay. So grab this, and I just need to go here, come back to go into there. And then we don't need this merger here any longer. But we do have to repair this now. That looks good. Cleans things up down here, too. Yes, indeed it does. Okay, do you have a couple of industrial beams? Oh, you don't have anything in you because it's all going into here. Right, okay. Hey, we're up to 21 coupons. Nice. I think that's it, guys. I think that's it. It's looking good. And we're building up in case beams. All right, that is going to be it for this episode. My plan for the next episode, tentative plan, is to set up some um, hypertubes. I want to get those going. Um, I think they're fun, A, but they're also going to help us get around a little bit better, too. And uh, so, yeah, that's the plan. Uh, I got to kind of plan it out, though, because, you know, like anything else, I don't want to just run a bunch of hypertubes haphazardly. Um, there's two more things, too, that we're going to do. Um, that, well, okay, so the next production line that I want to set up is I want to set up um, stators. Now, we're going to make a production line for stators because we need them for several things, including, but not limited to... Excuse me, I had to take a drink there. Um, the project part, uh, the versatile freight, or no, I'm sorry, the um, automated wiring that we have to make for the for the space elevator. Um, but we, like I said, we need them for uh, several other things too, so we're going to actually set up a, a permanent production line for stators. So that's the next production line we're going to do, but before we do that, I think I want to go ahead and get going on the hypertubes. There is one thing we could do right now, though. Last thing for this episode. Um... I was thinking about setting up a permanent production line for versatile frames and automated wiring with the idea being just like we did with the smart plating, you know, once we get everything for the space elevator, then the rest of it just goes into the sink to make us coupons. But I, I don't think I'm going to do that because it's going to be a lot of work to set that up for something that's temporary. And, you know, as time goes on, we're going to be making more and more expensive or you know, sink wise valuable items that we'll be putting in there anyway. So it, it, I think it's just really going to be a waste of my time to do that. Um, so that being said, we're just going to use what we have in our storage to set up a, a, a temporary setup for the space elevator. And we can't do automated wiring yet because they don't have stators, but we can do uh, versatile frames. So let's grab an assembler. And I think what we'll do is let's just put this assembler here. Yeah, let's put the assembler there. Again, this is temporary. And we're going to set this to versatile frames, and we just need to feed steel beams and modular frames into here. 
Uh, the other thing we can do too is we can overclock this all the way to the top just to do it as quickly as possible because normally it only does five per minute but now it'll do 12 and a half per minute um okay and then uh, all we need to do now is just run um frames and I'm trying to think how i want to do this uh frame frames and beams into it let's go with a Mark three lift, and we'll put one there, and we'll put one there. All right, and then we need beams, and we need, oh, we're gonna have to actually face that out too. And we needed uh, f uh, modular frames. Just run this out to here. Will that go in nice and neat for us? Hey, look at that. Sometimes it just works out. Actually, no. Never mind. I spoke too soon. That isn't quite right. Okay. I'll try it again. Uh, grab a Mark III. Almost, almost went in perfectly. We'll come to here. Go back to. Up to. And then in. Okay, that looks good. And then we'll do the same thing here, except for on this one, we're going to have to come out even more. So I'm going to, this is going to be our line here. Um, let's go over two, go up three. Actually, no, we only needed to go up two on that one. Will this even go all the way down? Oh, yeah, it will. Okay. Oh, nope. Never mind. I didn't have it connected. It is going... Oh, man. <laughs> didn't quite make it. All right. That's fine. Um, that's where it needs to go. So let's just go back to here. Raise that up, too. And then we'll... Um, Oh, here, let's do this. That lined up there. Okay, go two there. Did it again. I don't know why I keep thinking I need three there. Uh, there we go. In there. Okay. Now, we need to make 500 of these. So we're just going to put... A storage bin here and once we have them I'm, I'll just run them down uh, to the space elevator either in my own inventory or we'll load up the explorer explorer if I've got the hyper tubes in place by then we'll use those because it'll be faster okay uh, we, now all we need is power the insulator is there yeah we'll just run it along this seam here And we should be good to go. Yep, there it goes. Look how fast those things are moving into there. That's crazy. It's good. Well, it's filling up the buffers, what it's doing, though. So so these will give us 12 and a half per minute. And we need 500. So uh, 120 and a half-ish in 10 minutes. So... 30 minutes would be 300. Yeah, it'll probably take about 40, 45 minutes. I'm just a very rough guesstimate there, but shouldn't take too long. And um, I'll keep an eye. I'm not worried about the beams because we're making those here. These we're making at the other factory. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on it, but I'm pretty damn sure it's not going to use all of them. Not likely that it will, but if it does, you know, we'll, we'll make more. 
Okay, guys, that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, and I just realized <laughs> I've had my damn camera off this whole entire episode. Wow, okay, well, you didn't have to look at my ugly mug this time. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. See you guys later. Bye-bye.